everyone, this is Amanda from Amanda Around the Globe and today I am going to talk about my top tips for doing YouTube. So I get a lot of questions about how I edit my videos, how I find music for my videos, how I created a filming schedule, how I found my niche, all of these things. And so I'm going to talk about all these things today in one video. I'm just going to wrap it, all the tips up into one video. So this video will be really, really helpful for you if you want to start a YouTube channel, if you have started a YouTube channel but you're not really sure where you're going with it, or if you're just looking for a little bit more direction in your YouTube channel, or even if you're just interested in figuring out how to edit videos. So let's just get into the video. I have this broken down into two sections. The first one is filming and video ideas and how I make all of that work together. The second section is editing videos and the equipment that I use to edit and make my videos. Okay, so let's just get into the first section, which is filming and video ideas. So the first thing you're going to want to do is come up with a niche for your YouTube channel. You're gonna want this to be very clear when someone first visits your channel, what your channel is about. So for me, obviously my channel is about minimalism. I talk primarily about minimalism, it's my main topic, and then I also have a few topics that I branch out with, and though I still I still keep it all tied together in minimalism, so all the other things that I talk about are also related to minimalism. So this keeps my channel very cohesive and very obvious about what I my channel is about, but I still am talking about a variety of different subjects, if that makes sense. So for example, I also talk about minimalism and saving money, I talk about minimalism and um, my personal like living situation. I do a lot of room tours and house tours because I move a lot. I talk about how minimalism helps me travel the world. I talk about minimalism and beauty and the, minimal the minimalist products that I do use. And I talk a lot also about zero waste and sustainability because these topics are all related back to minimalism. It allows me to talk about a few different things but also still keep it all tied together. So when you make your niche, it is important to focus on one niche so that people know what to expect out of your channel and not make videos about a whole different bunch of random topics. So for example, because my niche is minimalism, I would not ever make a video on something like gaming or different types of wine or something like that because that's not my niche. There are a lot of videos on YouTube about gaming and if you want to watch those videos you can go to someone else's channel who makes videos about gaming. But when you come to my channel you know what you're getting and that, that's what makes people subscribe is because they're interested in this topic and they want to watch videos about it and it's obvious that that's what I talk about. So. <laughs> I hope that was helpful. Okay, let's talk about filming schedules. So I have a schedule of uploading videos every Tuesday and Thursday. So this means that two times a week I have to film a video, edit it, and upload it and have it ready to go on Tuesday and Thursday. Um, there's a lot of work that goes in behind the scenes of this and filming videos two times a week might not seem like a lot when you're just watching the videos, but to actually put in the effort to make those videos is quite time consuming. So first you have to plan out your video. Let's talk about how to find video ideas because this is the first thing you'll need to do before you can even make a video. So I personally find a lot of my ideas from watching other YouTube channels. So I like to watch a lot of videos about minimalism and I started making videos about minimalism because I thought there was not enough minimalist content on YouTube and when I first started there were very very few minimalist channels, especially uh, minimalist channels made by women. So I was really excited to get into this niche and talk about my personal experience with it because I feel like I bring something very different to the table than most other people. For example, I travel full time, I live out of a backpack, and I live a little bit of a different lifestyle than most Western people. So I find a lot of my video ideas by watching other people's videos and making my own version of it. So for example, um, this is just a really broad example, but draw my life videos. There's a ton of people that make draw my life videos on YouTube. They're really popular, especially if you have a bigger channel and people are very invested in you as a person and they want to know more about you. Um, you can do a draw my life video and obviously everyone that draws 
that makes a draw my life video is going to have a different video because they have a different life. So I like to make videos about minimalism and how it applies to my own life. So videos like what I pack, home tours, my beauty essentials, what I like, how I figure out what I want to buy, what I spend money on, what I don't spend money on. All of these topics are related to minimalism and related to my channel. and. They wouldn't be like anyone else's videos because it's specific to my life and my experience with minimalism. So making videos that are specific to your experience really is helpful, I think, to people on YouTube that want to learn about something. So if someone comes to your channel, for example, sometimes people come to my channel to learn about saving money. I have videos about how I saved a ton of money to start traveling full time. And ever since then, I have continued making videos about how I personally save money, my top tricks for saving money, and all of those types of things. So if someone is interested in saving money and minimalism, then they can come to my channel and see that. So another way, aside from watching YouTube videos, is to research your niche. Just type into Google your topic. So I would type into Google minimalism and see what comes up and see what people are talking about, see what people are reading about, and then you can make your own spin on it. So I try to think of how would I approach this subject? What would I wanna say? What would I wanna say that maybe other people aren't saying? Things like that that are a little bit different and just try not to make the same videos that everyone else is making because then you probably won't stand out very much. Okay, so to film your videos, you're going to need equipment. So let's move on to the filming and editing section of this video. <laughs> I will explain to you guys the equipment and the resources that I use to make YouTube videos. First of all, let's start with my camera. I'm currently using a Canon 70D DSLR camera. It is not cheap, but I saved up for quite a while to buy it and I really love photography. I do a lot of photography as well, and so for me this is worth it. You definitely don't need a camera that's this fancy to make YouTube videos. A lot of people just use something really, really simple. Um, you could get a Canon G7X, which is a very, very good camera. It's small, it's compact, it's really great for vlogging or just making videos at home. It's really good quality and about 500 US dollars. If you are not even on the level of buying something like that, you could buy any kind of camera. I'm gonna link a video down below by Casey Neistat and he made a video about why it doesn't really matter about the actual camera that you're using. You can make really good videos with a really inexpensive camera. Um, the quality of your photography isn't usually what people come to your video for. It's more of what they're getting out of the video and as long as your video is uh, somewhat visually appealing and you can see what's happening then it will be a-okay. To edit my videos I use iMovie which is a completely free program on Mac computers. So I got iMovie with my Mac Apple laptop and I've been using that the entire time I've been on YouTube. It's a relatively easy program to figure out. I know my first video that I ever made took me about six hours to edit and it was a one minute video and so it definitely it's not something that you can pick up right away and there's still things that I'm learning all the time about this program but Overall, it's pretty easy to use once you figure it out and it's totally free and I know a lot of people that are really big on YouTube that still use iMovie. As long as you're not making crazy vlogs with like a whole bunch of different transitions and titles and all those things, then you don't really need something fancy. You don't need to invest in Final Cut Pro. Um, iMovie works totally fine. For my music in my videos. I found all of my music on SoundCloud and this is a platform that artists that are kind of new come to upload their content to and a lot of the times they'll say in their in the video description or the song description that you can use their song for your YouTube video. If they don't say that you can just ask them and see what they say. A lot of the times they'll say yes. I use almost Almost all of my videos have a song by Lakey inspired in them. I really love his music. It's great for videos, it's great for background music, and I actually contribute a small amount to him on Patreon every month because I really appreciate his music and that he gives it out for free and lets people use it in his videos. 
Um, I'll leave the link to his profile down below if you guys want to check that out because you can use I think any of his songs in your videos and it's really really awesome music. Well, the last thing that I want to talk about with editing is thumbnails. Thumbnails are a really really important part of your video. A lot of people make the video and then they upload it and they kind of forget about it. A thumbnail is what's going to make people click on your video. The title is what's going to make people click on your video. So make sure that your title and your thumbnail are cohesive and that they properly describe the video and what it's about. So for example, this video is about tips for YouTube, so I'll call it top YouTube tips, best tips for YouTube, something like that. And in the thumbnail, I'll make sure to show that that's what this video is about. If you have just a screenshot from your video that's just kind of blurry and not really descriptive of what your video is about and your title is not really that helpful, then people are probably not going to click on your video. If you don't give them a reason to click on it, they won't click on it. If you explain to the people what they're going to get out of the video, they're much more likely to click on it in my experience. Also, you want to make sure to talk about things that people want to learn about, and this is why I suggest researching topics in your niche. If I were to make a video about, I don't know, like, minimalist nail clippers, that's probably not going to get a lot of views because that's not something that people are really looking for. Um, I don't think <laughs> that's what people are looking for. This is all of my basic YouTube tips. If you guys have questions about anything in particular, just let me know in the comments below and I can make a more detailed video on something if that's what you guys are interested in. I'll also leave some resources in the description box so make sure to check that out. There's a lot of really good resources already on YouTube about how to make YouTube videos. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did and don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below and I will talk to you. I will see you guys in my next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!